Hey what's up guys, welcome to Sir Bros. In this video we're going to be getting hands on with Boson's NetSim. We're going to be going through one of their labs and then answering that all important question, is it worth it? So for full transparency, I am an affiliate with Boson and there are affiliate links in the description. But don't let that put you off, this is my honest view and opinion. I would never recommend something I don't fully believe in. So what is NetSim? NetSim is a network simulator designed to give you hands-on experience configuring and troubleshooting without the need to buy real equipment. The biggest benefit of NetSim is the huge amount of pre-configured guided labs which will take you through most of the major topics in the CCNA exam. So let's take a look at what NetSim looks like. This is my computer and this is NetSim. Here on the left hand side you can see all of the pre-configured guided labs. For the CCNA there is well over 100 labs. As you can see at the bottom we also have it for CCMP. So you can get a good idea of what these labs are like. I'm going to load one up and take you through it. So let's choose, let's have a good one. Let's go OSPF1. So I'll just double click to load the lab. So once the lab loads, you're presented with a few screens. The top one is the lab instructions. Underneath that, you have the device command prompt. And on the right hand side, you have a list of all the connections. And if you hover your mouse, you'll be able to see which interface they're connected to and the individual devices here on the right as well. If you double click onto one of these, it will open up the command line for that device. Now this might just be me, but I do find the default lab view a little bit cramped. I don't like having to scroll up and down the lab instructions. The best way I found to set this up is to first unpin all of these side windows. And it just gives us a little bit more breathing room. Oh, missed that one. Next, I right click on the lab instructions and select float. This allows me to move this window around independently. Now, if you have a second monitor, then great. Drag this over to that monitor and you should be good to go. But if you're like me and you only have a single monitor, what you can do is snap this over to the left, open NetSim on the right, and with a little bit of adjusting, you should be good to go. Okay, so now onto the lab. If we take a closer look at the lab instructions, at the top we see the objective. Now the objective of this lab is to learn how to configure OSPF. Underneath the objective, you have the lab topology. You also have the topology on the right, but in the instructions you have a bit more detail. Underneath the topology, you have the command summary. This shows every command needed to complete this lab. We also have an IP address table that we can use for reference. Then we have the tasks to complete the lab, but if we scroll a little bit further, we also have the lab solutions. Now this is gonna show you step by step, command by command, exactly how to complete this lab. So if you get stuck or if you just want to check your work, all of the information is here. So if we scroll back up, we'll get started. So task one is to configure router one, router two, and router four, so they can communicate with each other using OSPF. The first part says configure router one with the appropriate hostname, IP address, and subnet masks, refer to the IP address table. Enable the interfaces and set a clock rate of 64 kilobits per second on the serial interface. So if we come over here, we can see we're on router one. Hit enter a few times, and we'll start off by typing enable. And the first thing to do is set an appropriate hostname. Now an appropriate hostname for me might not be an appropriate hostname for Boson. So I'm gonna assume they want me to call this router one. So I'm gonna go into configuration terminal and type hostname router one. It then wants us to configure the IP addresses. And up here we can see there's two interfaces, fast ethernet zero slash zero, and serial zero slash zero and their IP addresses and subnet masks. So interface 
fast ethernet 0 slash 0 IP address 10.1.1.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 then bring it up by typing no shutdown and now we'll do the serial interface interface serial 0 slash 0 IP address 172.16.10.1.1 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And it also wants us to set a clock rate of 64,000. So I'll type clock rate 64,000. And bring the interface up. So we'll do a quick do show IP interface brief just to confirm. And that looks absolutely perfect. So number two also wants us to configure router two with the appropriate host name, IP address, and subnet masks. So we already have that open here. So we come into here, enter a few times, and just do the same thing. And the interface again, fast Ethernet zero zero. IP address. 10.1.1.2 and subnet mask and we'll bring that interface up. So that's all we want to do on router 2 and on router 4 again just the host name the IP address. Oh I forgot the host name on this one so just do that quick. Host name router 2. So what we'll do is go over to devices on the right add router 4 double click and come into here and again just set the hostname and IP address hostname router 4 interface serial 0 slash 0 IP address 172.16.10.2 Subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and bring the interface up. Okay, the last part of task one is to verify that each router can ping its directly connected neighbors. So from router one, ping router two and router four. So let's go ping and first we'll do router two. So 10.1.1.2. Perfect, that's successful. And um, router four, so ping 172.16.10.2. Enter. Perfect. And from router two, ping routers one. So ping 10.1.1.1. Successful. And lastly, from router four, ping router one. Ping 172.16.10.1. And everything seems to be working. So task two is configuring OSPF. So on router one, enable OSPF and use a process ID of 100. They also want us to configure with an area ID of zero. So we go into router one and go back to configure terminal. And this time we're going to type router OSPF process ID of 100, enter, network 10.1.1.0.0.0.255 for the wildcard mask. And press enter. Oh, sorry, we forgot. Area 0. Enter. We also need to do this for the serial interface. So we'll type network 172.16.10.0.0.0.0.255. And not to forget the area of zero. Enter. Now it wants us to configure it on router two, again with a process ID of 100 and an area of zero. 
So we go over to root2, open configure terminal, router, OSPF, process ID of 100, and now we'll type network 10.1.1.0. And a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. Area, 0. And lastly, it wants us to configure the same on router 4. Again, process ID of 100 and the area of 0. And we can already see OSPF adjacencies forming. So we go over to router 4. Configure. Terminal. Router. OSPF, process ID of 100, network 172.16.10.0, and a wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255. Area, 0. Enter. So that now should be our OSPF configured. And you can see task 3 takes you through verifying that configuration. Now I could go through and verify the OSPF configuration, but I don't want to make this video too long or too boring for you. Once you finish your lab, what you can do is go over to the top where it says lab and then grade lab. So NetSim will go through all of your device configurations and tell you if you're missing commands or if you have any extra commands. As you can see by these green ticks, it means that we've configured all of the devices correctly as per the lab. So that brings us on to the big question. Do I recommend Boson NetSim? And the answer is yes, 100% I do. NetSim will get you hands-on configuring and troubleshooting these topics. The beauty of the pre-configured labs is it forces you to cover everything, even commands and scenarios that you might have forgotten or missed. But that doesn't mean it's right for you. Let me explain. NetSim is a great tool to practice and solidify your knowledge. But if you're on a budget, there are better places to spend your money. This is a list of the resources that I recommend to study for your CCNA. And these are in order of priority. As you can see, both Bosom XSIM and NetSim are optional, but highly recommended. If it comes down to either XSIM or NetSIM, I would recommend you go with the XSIM practice exams. But to give you the best chance, and if budget allows, get the NetSIM as well. You can even get XSIM and NetSIM in a bundle and save some extra cash. Well guys, that is my honest review of NetSIM. Definitely worth the money if you have it. If you found this video useful and you decide to pick up either a copy of XSIM or NetSIM, consider using one of the links in the description. These are affiliate links and I will get a small kickback, but that will be at no extra charge to you. And it's a great way to show your support for the channel. Other than that, thank you for watching.